Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, years ago in uh, Brother Robert's ministry, a young boy by the name of Willie Phelps uh, the, the, and then, now, Oral Roberts laid his hands personally on over two million people. And his, his, his shoulders had to be operated on because of it. Well, uh, some people, I've had people say this to me, I don't understand that, all that healing power going through. Healing is not a reward. Amen. We have to believe we receive it just the same. Well, he did, but it, it destroyed the top of his shoulders doing what God called him to do. He had them operated on it and just kept on going. And then he had appendix problems. He told the Lord, he said, I've had all the surgery I'm going to have. Well, he was in the hospital. And... <laughs> They, and the, the doctor had an x-ray machine on him. Richard and the doctor were back over here behind the, uh, just behind the wall there, and they could both see him, but they were looking at this part of him through the x-rays. He was lying there on the bed in that environment, and he just said to the Lord, I've had all the operations I'm going to have. So in his heart and mind, he just went to the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians. You only communicated with me in giving and receiving. That can be translated, that word can be, trans receiving can be translated receiving. He said, I cashed my receipts this morning. He said, I've laid hands on a lot, a lot, and lots and lot of people. And he said, I cashed my receipts this morning. They stood there and watched that appendix go down Hallelujah. right there on the x-ray machine. The doctor said, Richard, are you seeing that? He said, yes, I'm seeing that. He said, oh, why? I, I, I can't hardly believe that. Richard said, I totally believe it because I know what he's doing. <laughs> and then Brother Roberts testified to that doctor. Well, little Willie Phelps was there, just a young boy, and he had problems. He, he, he could hardly walk, and, and his, his mother was there with him, and Oral had just laid hands on all oh, so many people, and he was so tired, and he walked out, and, and Willie caught him. Are you Oral Roberts? Yes, I am. Um, I'm supposed to be healed today. He said, he said, son, I'm, I am so tired and worn out. I just really don't have any faith left. He said, I don't know about that, but I just know I'm supposed to be healed today. <laughs> so he said, well, of course his mother was there. And, and he said, well, uh, something like this. You'll just have to do the believing then because I don't have anything left. He said, I don't know about that. I just know I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> well, you can't turn that down. I just know I'm supposed to be healed today. Or oh, laid hands on him. He was perfectly healed and he grew to be a strong, big man. And, and, and if I remember right, he became an attorney and supported Oral Roberts University, but he was supposed to be healed today. You are supposed to be healed today. Now, I'll tell you something else that's exciting. You heard uh, Jerry and, and, uh, and Jesse talking about this and how wonderful it is. And uh, somebody just comes in and says, uh, 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 your, your, your bill has been paid. And that's happened to Gloria and I a lot. And uh, 
So we, we were in, in one place and uh, this, uh, in fact, we were at Applebee's and we walked in there and uh, I just, you know, I just, we, well, there's a booth in there that they, that we just sit in all the time. And we've had an Applebee's ministry. <laughs> I mean, we've, <laughs> we've paid off cars and <laughs> just all kinds of things for, for people and been all kinds of things happen. So we just walked in there and I, I really didn't know these people. And I, but I started to sit down over there and, and, and I looked over there at him and patted these people on the back and thanked them and, and everything. And they said, Brother Copeland. I said, well, glory to God. Well, I didn't pay any more attention to it. And so they left. Well, and the waitress came about and I said, I'm ready for the check now. She said, no, uh, the, the, the people paid the bill. I said, who? They said, well, the, those people that you were talking to over there a while ago, they paid the bill. Now that's a wonderful thing. Amen. And we've had it happen a lot. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus paid the bill. Amen. He paid the bill for our healing with his own blood. It's paid. It's paid for. Our healings, our bodies are paid for. Uh, he owns these bodies. We gave them to him as a living sacrifice. So uh, <clears throat> the thing that the Lord has directed Greg me to do this morning is to go to the book of Proverbs first in the fourth chapter. Now this is the pres prescription. In the fourth chapter of the book of Proverbs, in the, in the fifth verse, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, she shall preserve thee, love her, and she will keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. It is not a principal thing. It is the principal thing, with the wisdom of God. Amen. Now, you just continue. Verse 10, Hear, O my son, receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Now you come down <clears throat> to the 18th verse, but the path of the just is as the shining light and shines more and more into the perfect day. One translation says, just keeps getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Amen. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Now, what does that mean? Well, here in Texas, we, we, we say, well, I'm going to tend to it. Well, I did, and, you know, I'll tend to that. I'll take care of that. That's what it means. You know, I'll, I'll tend to it. I'll take care of it. Now, attend, he said, attend to my words. Okay. Well, that's first place. This word is first. Yes. This is first in my life. This, this book is my life. It is my life. Pick up your Bible. Say that. This book, this book, this book of covenants, this book of covenants belongs, to me. belongs to me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. This book is my life. This book is my life. It's, the the it's the word of the living God. He is my God. He is my God. His Son is my Lord and Savior. His Son is my Lord and Savior. And He directs my life. And he directs my life. Spirit, Spirit and, soul, and soul and body. And body. Financially, Financially and socially. And socially. 
This book is my life. Now, now that's thrilling. Now lift it and say this. This is a book of blood covenants. This is a book of blood covenants. I'm in this book. I'm in this book. I have a covenant, I have a covenant. Of, life, of life, healing, healing wealth, wealth, protection, protection with, the with the Almighty God. His son Jesus, His son Jesus bought and paid for this, and paid for this with His blood. With his blood. Therefore, Therefore, I'm healed. I'm, healed. I'm, well. I'm well. I'm taken care of. I'm taken care of. In, his name, In his name, I have it. I have it. And I'm supposed to be healed today. <laughs> <laughs> my son, attend to my words. My words, uh, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now I have a cross-reference Bible here. And it has a little three out beside health. And you go over to, to the center section and it says medicine. This is medicine to your flesh. This is the prescription for healing and life. But what good is a, a prescription if you don't take it? You know, you, you, the doctor gives you a prescription and... Uh, and after, you know, three or four weeks, you call him and say, this stuff's not doing any good. I'm, 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 I'm not any better at all. Well, have you taken it three times a day like I told you? Well, no, but it's sitting right here on the cabinet. <laughs> What's the problem? You're not putting it in the system. I, and I, I was talking about that time with, with that blood clot. And that night, that the Lord said to me when I, I, I realized what I'd done, I was just quoting scriptures. That's the time he said to me, Kenneth, the memory of a potato has never nourished anyone. You have to put it in the system. You have to put the word in the system. Now the 107th song, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 107. <clears throat> oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. He is good and his mercy endures forever. Verse 17. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhors all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gate. They draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. He saves them out of distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word and healed them. What does that mean? The centurion, Cornelius, sent word to Jesus. My servant is sick unto death. They sent him word. He, listen to Jesus now. He said, I'll come and heal him. He's so easy. But that's what he was called to do in the earth. And people get all hung up on whether or not it's God's will to heal today. Well, healing, we do believe, Brother Copeland, that healing has passed away. <laughs> well, had, and Brother Hagen had that problem, and the Lord said to him, Has faith passed away? 
No, and it never will. Amen. Well, God would have to change his name. <laughs> he said, I am the Lord Amen. that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah Shalom, or your peace. I am Jehovah Rapha, Amen. your healer. Amen. That's who he is. Amen. I said, that's who he is. Amen. And he said, I am God and I change not. Amen. He can't change any more than the devil can change. That's just the way God is and that's just the way the devil is. Hallelujah now. So, now notice that. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted, they cry out unto the Lord in their trouble and he saves them out of distress. Well, now let's just stop here right now. If there's some kind of problem in that way or any kind of unforgiveness, let's just fix it right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So that that is not a situation. And we're going to pray the prayer of faith in a, in a little while. But uh, right now I'm going to turn over to Mark chapter 11. And uh, we'll look at that. Jesus' classic teaching on faith. And the, um, in the twelfth force on first, on the morning when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he may find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Now, let's put that up in the, in the, uh, the Amplified, the, the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as leaves. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the fig season had not yet come. So that tree had leaves a little bit ahead of time. Well, he saw it afar off. And God over there and and Jesus answered and said to it. He talked to that tree. Amen. Now, in the garden, the forbidden fruit was a fig tree. How do we know that? Because they took fig leaves and tried to clothe themselves. Can you imagine a fig leaf suit? <laughs> Always beware of an artist that paints belly buttons on Adam and his wife. They're not there. <laughs> God created them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, and I've seen it again and again. <laughs> and one time, uh, David Weeder and I were in, in this beautiful place, and, this, and they were taking us in there, and they showed the, uh, the painting of them in the garden. And he said, the, the, look at the magnificence of this artwork and so forth. And there they were, their little navels sticking right out there. <laughs> well, and I looked at David, he looked at me. There wasn't no way I was going to say anything to that person about that. Anyway. <laughs> now, in the morning as they passed by, 
So what did he say? He said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Count them, nine words. And they went on to Jerusalem and he, uh, uh, into the temple and he began to cast them out that sold and bought in the temple over through the table of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves would, doves would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught. Now this is the reason why. He had to clean that sin out of that temple. Here's what they were doing. If you brought your lamb, your unblemished lamb as a sacrifice, they'd find something wrong with yours. And they'd go get one, you'd have to buy it. Then they'd take yours back there and someone else come in and they'd say, find something wrong with them and sell the one you brought to them. He said, you're a den of thieves. He caught them at it and overturned their money tables. I mean, he messed that place up. up. Now, I want you to notice this. He went in there the night before and the day before and didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. He just walked through there and observed. Why? He went back that night to pray because he said, I only say what I hear my father say and I only do what I see my father do. They went in there the next day and came down to the bottom line, he preached. Yeah. Now, now look at this. He, he preached and, uh, and he answered and said unto them and so forth, they read in anyway. And they came back in the morning they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And those are big trees. Peter calling to remember saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree that you cursed is withered away, dried up from the roots. Now remember, words are spiritual containers. Jesus spoke to the tree. He talked to the tree. He didn't talk about the tree. He talked to the tree. And then, and they asked him about it, and he answering saith unto them, have faith in God. The cross reference says, have the faith of God. Well, you and I, when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, well, read the book of Ephesians. By grace are you saved through faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So faith came into us. Amen. That's the way we, we received the new birth. That's the biggest, that's the biggest miracle of all. Is, is that this inner man completely, totally changed. I've seen it happen in such miraculous ways. Right while I was looking somebody in the eye, a serial killer captured a woman that was a partner to this ministry in San Antonio, Texas. And I mean, they were after him. His name is Stephen Moran. They were after him. He had killed 21 women And he, he kidnapped her and she started telling him she loved him. He said, woman, shut your mouth. I'll, I'm going to kill you. No, oh, she said, you're not going to kill me. You're not going to kill the only person that ever loved you. <laughs> well, she, before she got in her car that day, she, oh, she went back and got one of my cassette tapes and stuck it in the, in the player. And so, and by this time they're out in the country. Got away from the police. He just calmly drove away in her car. And she just kept telling him that. And finally he said, will you please shut up? 
She said, well, may I listen to my tape? He said, I don't care what you listen to. So, <laughs> and suddenly he slammed on the brakes and said, who said that? Looked in the back seat. She said, what, Stephen? He said, I heard a voice. She said, what did that voice say? Stephen, this is your last chance, son. They stopped right there and she led that man to the Lord. And, and, he, and he, he, he handed her his pistol, unloaded it. And, and he said, do you, think, do you think I could surrender to Brother Copeland? No, she said, that's not the thing to do. And um, so then, then she contacted us because he requested me to come baptize him in water. So I went to the Bear County Jail in San Antonio where he was in, he was in the county jail there. And they had a big tub out there and to, for me to stand beside it and baptize him. And I mean, those guys were standing there with their hands on their pistols while he was doing that. When I walked in there and I saw all that, and the, I mean, they were concerned. I said, guys, don't, don't be concerned. Don't be concerned. I said, particularly don't be concerned for me. And so I baptized him. And when, I, when he went down under that water and came up, I mean, there was a glow on his face and he was washed clean. And I was there. The, and he, didn't, he, he didn't want any repeals. He told me, he said, I, he said, I don't, I don't want, he said, I, I don't want life in prison. And he said, I want to go home. I want to go home. He says, too many people hate me. He said, my family hates me. And he said, that my, my, my little boy's five years old. And he said, I don't want him knowing anything about me. And I was with him there when they executed him with lethal injection. And I said, Stephen, do me a favor. Let me know if grace is enough. He said, I will. And um, so, and when they start that, <clears throat> start that flow, there's, there's a loud bang. And you know within seconds, I'm going to be dead. It's not an easy thing. And he was so happy. And Lawrence Harvey was warden. He's a spirit-filled warden, and he and I were good friends. And, and so he, uh, he asked him, said, Stephen, you got some things you want to say? Oh, yeah. And he started preaching. <laughs> if the Holy Ghost could do something with, a, with, with something like me, think what he could do for you. Amen. There were people there that wanted to see him die. <laughs> And he's all strapped to that gurney like this, and he's just smiling and just preaching and going on. And, that, and the warden said, Stephen, son, son, wait, wait a minute. <clears throat> we got business to take care of. He said, yeah, I know it. <laughs> just smiling. Well, I'm waiting to know if, it's, if grace is enough. Yeah. Well, I'm as, I was as closest from, from here to this front row. From there, there's a little, little wooden railing here. I was right up front. Other people were there in the back, so he couldn't see their faces. He could see me. Because I was right up there and close enough to see him and see his eyes and to hear him. And he's laying there, strap, had his head strapped down. There's IVs in both arms. And he looked over there at me with two thumbs up. <laughs> More than enough. Grace is sufficient. More than enough. And that thing made that, that bang and he's still smiling and looking around and his, his, his head kind of dropped down like this and his body did that and he's gone. He left praising God. I watched that new creation happen. I saw it in his face. That's the biggest miracle that could possibly ever take place. 
And in that miracle is also your healing, yes. your finances. Uh, you're redeemed from the curse of the law. Yes. <laughs> Jesus being made a curse for us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, thank you, Lord. Let, let's go back now into... Uh, Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now, 90th Psalm. Psalm 90. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever Thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, You are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in Thy sight are but yesterday. And when it is past, is a watch in the night. You carry them away with a flood, and they are as a, they are as asleep in the morning. They're like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows up. In the evening it's cut down and it withers. We are consumed by thine anger, <clears throat> by the wrath, by your wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all of our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore and ten. And if by reason of strength there are fourscore, and yet their strength and labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, even according to your fear, to, to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts in, to, into wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad in our days. Now, let's look at that, those verses right there, 10, um, in fact, I'll tell you what let's do. We can turn, let's, let's put that up in the classic amplified right there. I want you to see that. Satisfy our years or three score years and 10, 70 years, or even if by reason or strength, four score years, yet it, with their pride and additional years, only labor and sorrow, for it's soon gone and we fly away. Now, there is a footnote in the classic amplified Bible to those scriptures that comes from the book of Numbers. This Psalm is credited to Moses who was interceding with God to remove the curse which made it necessary for every Israelite over 20 years of age when they rebelled against God at Kadesh Barnea to die before reaching the promised land. God didn't promise us 70 or 80 years. And I've heard people say that. I heard Brother Hagin say that. No? No. Moses was interceding because those that came out of Egypt just rebelled and you couldn't do much with them. So, and they kept saying, we're going to die in this desert. 
every way they could think of. He brought us out here to kill us. We're going to die in this desert. They were covenant people. They kept saying it. So, and he said, it's come into my ears and they're going to die in this desert. Now Moses is interceding about this and crying out to the people. God did not say that. However, turn to the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they were fair and they took them wives of all that they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. God said that one. He said that. This other was an intercession. Now, let's go to the 91st Psalm. And now here is the, the standard study in the Psalms. Psalm 90, a prayer of Moses, a man of God. Psalm 91, you notice it doesn't say who wrote it. Then that means Moses wrote this one. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me. So Moses just kept on singing. <laughs> And he had the answer to the 90th Psalm. And he starts down through here, I will say of the Lord, and surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He'll cover me with his feathers and under his wings I'll trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Thou shalt, I'll not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, and it shall not come nigh me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. I wrote in my Bible, like a bad movie, and not come nigh me. I'm just sitting in a theater watching this horror show, which is stupid. <laughs> Amen. I'll tell you what happened. Very early, <clears throat> I hid behind a door and jumped out there at John and Kelly, and they, they jumped and, whoa, daddy, don't do that. And then they started laughing. Well, I walked back in the other room and I want you to know the Lord jerked me up. He said, don't you ever do that again. He said, here you are out preaching against fear and then you frighten your children. He said, that's not funny at all and you go apologize. Amen. Well, and John was just a little boy. And we, we walked into the store. And I don't remember, a drugstore, I think, or something like that, that had some toys. And he came over there with this little toy motorcycle. He said, Daddy, I, I, don't, I, don't, I want this. And, uh, and I, I don't remember why. I said, no, John, uh, just put it back on the shelf. Normally, I would just bought it for him. Well, we got home and undoing things, and he had that he had that little motorcycle with him. I said, "Boy, did you pick that up in that store?" Uh huh. I said, "Well, come on." He said, "Where are we going?" I said, "You're gonna go take it back." Do I have to do that? Can't you just pay for it? I said, "No, sir." 
Nope. So we walked back in there and I asked for the manager and he came out. I introduced myself to him and I said, my son here has something he wants to tell you. <laughs> he looked at me. I said, come on, son. He handed him that little toy motorcycle. He said, I didn't pay for this. And the man took it back and he wasn't smiling. He said, well, son, I appreciate you coming down here and bringing this back. But I want to tell you, I admire you for the courage you had to bring this back and stand me, uh, stand up and look me in the face. And he shook his hand. Wow. That's the way you handle that. Amen. You don't spank him, then go up there and pay for it. Yes. Amen. Amen. I came home traveling one day and, and uh, there was Gloria and John and they weren't all that happy. And Gloria said, tell him what happened. He said, well, and this other little boy called his name. He said, we were out there in that vacant lot. We were playing with matches and we set that, lot, that, that, play, that grass on fire. Well, they came running home he ran into his mother and he said, do they put five-year-old boys in jail? <laughs> <laughs> so I just sat down there on the floor with him. I said, John, what if we'd have come home and they'd have said, well, we're sorry, Copeland. So, uh, we found your little boy burned in, in that in that grass fire over there. And that other little boy would have had his folks to see that. Boy, his eyes got big. He said, Daddy, I'm sorry. I said, well, that's good that you're sorry. But don't do that anymore. Don't be playing with matches. No, he said, that's the end of that. <laughs> and so now, he has a sense of honor, a sense of strength, and no fear. Are you listening to me? Fear is not okay. Hallelujah. Well, that's enough said about that. But that, that all has to do with the healing ministry. It, it, all, all of that, all, all of those principles are the same. So now you see he, he, he mourned the people that they were dying. Well, God said, yeah, I heard them. So they're not going to, they're going to die in the desert. And you find it over, over in the book of Numbers. They're going to die in the desert. They are going to die in the desert. So all of them over 20 years old will, will die in this desert. That didn't mean they went to hell. They just got what they said. That's the point. They got what they said. I took John over there to, to learn what to say and how to face it. Just stand up there and face it, but you have to have the courage to say it. Yes. It has to be said. And then the glory and I taught them to never be afraid. I took them down, stood them right there in front of the car. And uh, I said, one of these days, you're going to want to drive one of these. But in the meantime, look at the size of this thing. I said, it'll squash you like a bug. But you don't have to be afraid of it. Now, other people say, don't get out there in that street. Daddy's afraid you're going to get run over. That's the wrong thing to say. And I said, now, you, you have to watch you have to be careful and you have to stay out of the way and, and always, always pray, seek God, know what's dangerous and what isn't. Well, then I really had to watch after John because he didn't have any fear. 
and we named him John David after the, after the fearless warrior king. Well, when I was preaching in, for the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship again and, and in the Queen Mary. <laughs> it was docked. Well, since I was a speaker, I had a nice suite and went up there and it had a porthole there and it was open. And I walked back in there and John was hanging out that porthole looking down the side of it and it was about 90 feet down to the... <laughs> so I just reached up there and, you know, caught him by the back of his britches. And I looked up, I got up there and I said, uh, that's a long way down there, isn't it? Yeah, Daddy, he said it is. I said, I think y'all come back in here. <laughs> why? Well, I said, I think it ought to be obvious, John, why? <laughs> He said, oh, I'm not going to fall out of it. I said, I know you're not, but get out of there. <laughs> Stop that fear. That's when when Jairus came up to Jesus and said, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her and she'll live. Then, and read it in the gospel of Luke. And then the death messenger said, came and said, uh, your daughter has died. Don't trouble the master anymore. Jesus, Jairus didn't say anything. Jesus turned to him and said, stop the fear. Believe only she shall live. Stop the fear. Believe only you will be healed today. Stop the fear. Believe only. Amen. Your finances are going to work Amen. because you're supposed to be healed today. Amen. And when, when fear begins to come, I mean, you put a stop to it. Amen. The only time I was ever frightened in an airplane, I didn't have an instrument rating quite yet. And I was flying that same little v tail bonanza and, and I left Camden, Arkansas, to go to St. Louis and pick up my dad. Well, and now, now all this has enormous to do with your healing right now. And, um, and the, it, was, it was forecast then to be, be overcast, but it was supposed to be visual flight rules only. But back there then, no satellites and, you know, but the closer I got, the, I got, began to get into the mountains. And so I, I just climbed up above the clouds. I got up there and I looked at just this big bank of a, and I hollered, God, get me down from here. <laughs> well, then I called flight service and told them where I was. Now listen to how God took care of me now. He and, 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 and told him my situation. And he gave me some instructions and so forth. He said, do you know how to tune into a, a two indication to the Saxton VOR? I said, yes, sir, I can do that. And he said, now when you cross that and so forth, I want you to take the 125 degree radial outbound. And, and then I, he said, I fly a bonanza. That really sounded good. Well, he gave me all the instructions and everything. And uh, I, I felt fear coming up my legs. I could feel it. And so, and he, he told me what to do and how to, how to manage this. And he said, I'm going to teach you the falling leaf procedure in this airplane. Problem with that, that little bonanza, you tuck the nose down and it immediately gets very fast. Then you get in the clouds and it'll get into a spiral. Then you're in trouble. Anyway, so he began to talk to me. And, and then and, and I would talk back to him. And then I would try to think and it, it didn't work. So I began to instruct myself I found out later the Air Force teaches that. 
And then I, I learned how to do that in other type ratings. I instruct myself. You know, you'll believe yourself before you do anybody else. <laughs> now, listen to what fear did. Anyway, and what God did. I, I followed his instructions to the letter. And, and in that exercise, I had the gear and flaps down, a specific power setting in there, and, and the little airplane was descending 500 feet a minute, which is what I wanted. I got out, there was a big hole in the clouds, and, and the, I could see this river. Well, it's the Mississippi River, but I was so dumb headed, I didn't know what river it was. And I thought that river's going somewhere. So I just, I, I raised the, the, the gear and the flaps and, and went ahead and bottomed out under there and started down that river. And then I flew right over the top. I saw a farm duster strip. Oh, glory to God. Man, down went the wheels, down went the flaps, back came the power, <laughs> right down, right over this guy's farmhouse and landed on his strip. And I just, oh, I'll tell you what I felt like. I'm going to live another day. <laughs> That's the only time I've ever been frightened in an airplane like that. And so... He came out there in his truck and said, I guess the weather got you down. I said, yes, it did. He said, you know my airplane's gone? He said, I got it up front of someone getting work done on it. He said, let's just open the hangar door and we'll push you this little airplane in there and I'll take you to town. Nice. Wow. I thought, Whoa. So I got my luggage out and he had a little tow bar and we pushed it back in the hangar and got the luggage out and opened that back door and you couldn't see as far as from me to you. I went to town. He took me to town. I called that number at flight service and got that guy on the telephone and I said, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said, oh, thing, okay. I said, yes, thank you. And I called my dad and I said, I'm, I'll probably be out there in the morning because it's good weather the next day. So I thought, well, it felt great. I'll go over here probably go here and, you know, get something to eat or something. And so I walked out and there was a signal light right there on the corner, about, about as far as from here to that young woman there. And so I, I looked around, I looked over there and I thought, well, I'll just go over here and go across the street and see what happened. I got about here and I began to shake. I, my body almost went into convulsions and it came up my legs and I had to sit down on that curve and shake that out. That's how powerful the force of fear is on your physical body. And I could feel it. And I, I knew it. it was crawling up my legs. And I knew if it ever got to my head, I would not be able to think well enough to fly. <sighs> That's what fear do to your body. Well, now you get fear down in there and it's parked down in there and you don't feel it. Well, oh my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's look at Psalm 3110. The book of Psalm 3110. Verse 9 Have mercy upon me, O Lord. I'm in trouble. My eyes consumed with grief. Yea, my soul and my belly, for my life is spent with grief and my years in, with sighing. My strength fails me because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. Verse 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Oh, glory to God. Verse 9, as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, you do it toward all the brethren which are, which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more in love and that you study to be quiet and to do your own business, work with your own hands as we commend you that you walk honestly toward them that are without and that you may have lack of nothing. But I would that you have, that I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Now, that sorrow not, the Greek word is lapeo, Grieve not. We're not a people that have no hope. Don't get into grief. Amen. Amen. Grief is death's companion. Amen. I learned that ministering to people. I saw it over and over and over again. He said, sorrow not. And I went to a home going ceremony, a funeral. I don't like that word. Anyway, and the, the, the word of the Lord came to me. Well, I might as well tell you the rest of the story. But this woman, I, 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 I was ministering to her. And I, I told her she had a covenant of healing, she had cancer. And she'd just get so excited and she just, oh, she just, oh, I'm a covenant woman and I'm healed. I'd come back to town and, oh, Brother Coleman, you come break me. Okay, okay. Well, and it just went on and on and on. I found out later that she had some friends coming over there and talked her out of everything that I told her from the Word. Now, you don't need to be listening to him. He'll get your hopes up high and just crash her. Well, finally, she did crash. And I was out of town. I came. Well, I went. Her husband, his name was Bill, a sweet and lovely man. But I mean, this, this is his wife of many years. And he came over there to me and he said, now, Brother Copeland, She's already been embalmed now. <laughs> Don't be messing raising her from the dead. <laughs> I said, okay, Bill. I don't. But the Lord had me said, watch this. And then people started coming to him saying, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. Oh, we're so sorry you lost you. Well, then I, I began to watch for it. And I went into, to, saw places where I was ministering. And people would come up and say, oh, I'm so sorry. People came up to me when my mother went to heaven. Mm. We're so sorry you lost your mother. I said, well, don't pass that sorry on me. <laughs> yeah. She's not lost and neither am I. Amen. I know exactly where she is and she knows exactly where I am. All she did was leave town. And besides that, she wanted to go. <laughs> don't, and the Lord said, don't pass the sorrow around. And he said, I don't want you using that word to express yourself anymore. If you're going to apologize to somebody, say, I apologize. Don't tell them I'm sorry. He said, are you sorry? Is there something wrong with you? <laughs> Just a sorry man? I said, well, no. He said, well, quit saying you are. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I apologize. Well, that says it. Yeah. But I had to break the habit. 
I'm so sorry. Well, uh, oh, oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. He bore my griefs and carried my sorrows, but I'm sorry. <laughs> this is important. Yes, sir. Words count. Yes, sir. Well, anyway, and I'll, I'll get now right on into this. He said, don't do it. So grief, I've noticed this then and I watched it over the years and go home going services where people begin to grieve and they openly show the grief, openly show that grief. And so I had the Lord just, just watch it. Just, just watch it. And he pointed out this particular woman. He said, now what's going to happen to her? Well, I'd already seen it before. He said, people are going to gather around in the house. They're going to bring all the food right after that service is over. They're going to bring all the food in there and everybody's going to try to find something to say to her. And all they know how to do is say, we're so sorry. Yeah. And, the, you know, you see people that say, we're sorry for your loss. Yeah. Well, they're doing the best they can. Sure. But he said, now, what's going to happen to her when, when all the potato salad's gone? Nancy, you tell me. Yeah. All the potato salad and, 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 and Ed's home going was sudden, unexpected. Now she's left by herself. And every time they said, we're sorry, she cried. And the Lord said to me, don't think that feels bad. He, and when you begin to weep uncontrollably, he said, that feels good. And he said, it's so emotional, it's, it's, it's like the next thing to sexual satisfaction. Only it just goes on and on and on. And it just pours and it pours. And then, then he said, now, she's left there all alone. The potato salad's gone. They're all gone home. They cleaned up the kitchen, yeah. But now she's cried herself out and there's nowhere else to go. And people will tell her, oh, sweetheart, the time will take care of it. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Now, somebody like Nancy, she knew what to do. Come on. She's trained. Yeah. But people are not. What happens? Grief doesn't go away. This is the reason God said, don't be doing that. It just stays there. Yeah. And you get over it. Then there's the picture. Oh, no, I got to hide the picture. Why? It's still in there. And the Lord said to me, he said, I have whole churches full of it because the pastor doesn't do anything about it. They re weep and wail. One pastor, one of my heroes, He's the man that said, if that doesn't set you on fire, your wood's wet. And, there's a, and, and, and he's a black man. And, and the majority of his congregation was black. And they had a funeral in there in the congregation and, and began to weep and moan and cry and try to fall over that, that, that coffin. And he just shut it down. He said, you stop that. We don't do that in this church. Now get up from there and go sit down in your seat till I get through preaching to you. Come on. Okay. <laughs> he would not let that grief get in his church. Amen. Amen. It couldn't hang around. And if you're dealing with that this morning, there's joy on the other side of it. Amen. Now, Shirley Boone's dad was Red Foley. I mean, this is a hero country guy in Nashville, Tennessee. And that's her dad. And they used to sing with their dad. And she called me. She said, 
what you, what, he, she said, Kenner, what do you think I ought to do? And so I shared some scripture with her. I said, now, Shirley, let me tell you what you do now. You know, the Word of God said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. So I said, get a smile on your face. Go, get, get in front of the mirror and practice it. And I said, when you get the grief, she said, no, 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 the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So she told her sister about it, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and they practiced smiling. So they went downtown, the streets were full of people, and she said, <laughs> Uh, I, the, our faces were frozen in a smile and people thought, I said, they thought was something wrong with her <laughs> because they didn't grieve when their dad went home to be with the Lord. Amen. Well, Brother Copeland, I don't know whether he is saved or not. Well, that's just it. You don't know. And besides that, he's already gone and not anything you can do about it. Yes. But you can trust God. God is a faithful God. And there are evidences where it has happened that once somebody just stepped over on the other side and Jesus appeared to them and said, you don't want to do this right now. You need to accept me as your Savior. And this one situation was on a 700 club. The man had a bad heart. His wife kept praying for him and he wouldn't pay any attention to her. Now he just laughed her on, claimed to be an atheist. Well, he wasn't. And he was in his pickup and had a terrible heart attack and dropped his head down on the steering wheel. And when he hit that steering wheel with his head, suddenly he was in the spirit. And when he got in the spirit, there was Jesus, and there was heaven, and there was hell. And the Lord said, take your pick. No, no, he said, I want you. <laughs> and he woke up healed. If you have any grief in, your, in, in, in you at all right now, you just say, no, no, no. That doesn't belong to me. Amen. He bore mine. Amen. So let's go to the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. In the King James. Oh, the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah. Did you know the book of Isaiah is a mini Bible? There are 66 chapters. There's 66 books in the Bible. So, Isaiah 53. But you start in the 52nd, 13th verse. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage or his form was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. He's talking about Jesus here. Marred until he no longer looked like a man. Now Jesus was, was so slapped and so beat, his face was so swollen that he no longer looked human. And by the time he hung on that cross, he was so disfigured. Well, then you move on, a, on from that. And but chapter 53, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness, and when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Now, he's a good-looking man. Well, it would have to be. <laughs> he's a perfect specimen of a man. But if you met him in the street, he, he's just a good-looking Jewish man. And meet him in the street and talk to him. Very kind very loving, did no miracles, none until he was 30. Well, 
He's of the tribe of Judah, yes. not Levi. Amen. And that was on the blessing mountain. Yes. <laughs> so we are of the tribe of Judah. Amen. We're joint heirs with him. Amen. Now I want you to look at, watch this now carefully. Surely, no, oh, despised and rejected a man, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom was upon him. Nothing missing, nothing broken. I mean, he was, he was broken. Not a bone in his body was broken. But his heart was broken. And then pierced with a spear. And we all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned on the one to his own way and the Lord hath hid, laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Now, look at the ninth verse. And he made his grave with the wicked and the rich in his death. My King James cross reference has a number one by death. Does yours? Deaths, plural. Well, what does that mean? He was separated from God, so he not only died physically, but he had to die spiritually in order to give our spirit life. Amen. And when I started preaching that, you, you can't imagine how much flack I got for that. <laughs> just gave me all kinds of grief for it. But there it is. Yeah. And besides that, he was manifested in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Amen. Well, he was manifested as the Son of God in the flesh. Yeah. He's born of Mary and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But then when was he manifested in the spirit? In hell. Read the 22nd Psalm. Read the book of Acts. Amen. You'll not suffer my souls to stay in hell, neither will you let my body see corruption. Now, when he came out of that tomb, he had borne every sickness, every disease, every, everything, all of it. He bore it. He bore it. God laid it on him. He bore it. He was made a curse for us. 61st verse of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. And every sickness and every disease not written in this law is under this curse. So I don't care what it is. <laughs> COVID. Well, yeah. But when the, uh, the flu started and John Kelly was small, so I uh, told Gloria what we were going to do. And so I came home and, and she got the children who had this, we had this large uh, ottoman, big green ottoman. So we got it out in the living room floor. I said, all right, kids, going to take our flu shots. John's eyes got big and looked over there at me. So I took the 61st chapter, 61st verse, 28th chapter of Deuteronomy and Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, let me show you, because we're going to do this. Turn back over there. Look. But it will come to pass, if you'll not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all of his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. So it's not a matter of just God cursing you. No, he's not cursing anybody. It's the devil that's doing the problem. But they, did, they had to learn their covenant. They'd just come out of Egypt. 
Curse shall be as in the basket. Curse shall you be the fruit of your body in the land of scorn. Now, look at this one. The Lord will make the pestilence cleave unto thee until you've been consumed. 22nd verse. You'll be smitten with a consumption. What is that? Tuberculosis. With a fever, with an inflammation, with extreme burning, with the sword, with the blasting and mildew and pursue you until you perish. So we just sat down there and I, I read, you'll have fever, bad fever. I said, that's the flu, isn't it? Uh -huh. So I just had it like that and I flipped it over there to the book of Galatians. Christ has redeemed us from the flu. He's redeemed us from it. So we're not going to have it. So I just kept going back and forth like that. And they let them read it. Well, John wasn't, wasn't big enough to read, but Kelly could. And so we just read it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. They never did have the flu. Kelly came in from school one day with it. And uh, she was in high school. She came home. She said, Daddy, I've had flu symptoms on me all day long. And she said, I, I just, I, I, I really feel sick right now. And the Spirit of God just came up out of my mouth. I said, Kelly, we are not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed and the devil's trying to take your health away from you. I said, he's trying to give you the flu. She said, well, I won't take it. She said, I'll be back. Walked into her bedroom and closed the door. And she stayed in there for a while and, and came out for supper. No symptoms, no fever. She attacked it. They never did have it. And then they got out and Kelly started having children. And Gloria said, now you're going to have to teach these children. And they know the same thing. Amen. See, that's the way this works. Amen. You don't, what do we resist? We resist everything that Jesus bore for us on the cross. That's our identification. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Well, we, we resist sin and we resist sickness. We resist disease. Fight it. Well, you're against doctors? Absolutely not. If it hadn't been for doctors, most of the Christians would have died. <laughs> not knowing Doctors are in the same business. They're fighting sickness and disease. Find you a good Christian doctor and stay with him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But then there comes a time when you don't need it. I haven't been sick in so long. <laughs> now I had to fight pain because of my disobedience. The Lord told me to start walking and don't quit. I started walking and I quit. And, I, and then the price came Sunday morning after Southwest 2004. I went home. Oh, and Sunday morning I got up and I got in my shower and I let the hot water run on me. Oh, Lord, thank you that the convention was good and it's over. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 now my shower, I walk in it here, shower head is here. There's a little bench over here. Well, I had my washcloth in my hand uh, and the, the towel rack and everything's right here to my left. Well, I just took that washcloth. I got in there and I just pitched it over there on, on that bench, but it didn't go on the bench. It fell in the corner and I'm just standing there. Oh, oh. If I'd have done this, I'd have been all right. I did this. Oh, a disc exploded in my back and knocked me in the floor. I mean, I began to hurt pain like I had never experienced in my life. I screamed at the top of my voice before I could stop it. And I just hollered glory just as loud as I could. I was in the floor trying to call, crawl out of that 
trying to crawl out of that shower stall. And as I crawled out, I said, I will never have surgery on my back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not against you doing it. Amen. I'm not having that. You need to make first words count. Amen. So I crawled out of there and just crawled out. Well, Gloria called, called Dr. Weeder. Well, He's a chiropractor. He and his wife both are. And they headed over there just as fast as they could. They got me in there, and I mean, they went to work on me, beating me around on the back, and I couldn't straighten up. I, I was, when I finally did get up, I was walking like this. Oh, it hurt. It felt, felt like the biggest toothache in the world. It went down my left leg all the way to my ankle on that big nerve. Oh, Jesus, oh, God, forgive me. See, if I'd obeyed him, that never would have happened. Amen. Forgive me, Lord God, forgive me. Well, he went to work on me. And we learned about this decompression machine. And, and so we, he drove me across town. There was a chiropractor that had one. And, and I just refused not to walk. Amen. And God in the car, he drove me over there. And went in there, and, and of course, by this time, I'd had an MRI. And that chiropractor looked at that MRI, and he said, uh, and, and David told him, he said, he's out there in the office. He said, did he walk in here? <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, you mean he's not in a wheelchair? Wow. First words. Amen. We ordered one of those machines and put it right there in our house. He went to work on me. I have no pain. Now, oh my, I tell you, dear soul, dear soul, I tell you, and I got out there in the back yard, and, I, and that, oh, that lay hurt. Oh, so I, I wrapped two great big uh, sashes off my couple of old robes I had and two heating pads and turned those heating pads up just as high as I could get them trying to cancel out the pain. <laughs> and I shouted, thank God my other leg doesn't hurt. Amen. Thank God my hair doesn't hurt. My hands don't hurt. The only thing hurting about me is my left leg. Now that I've got another leg and it's all right. Amen. I thank God for the grass. Thank God for the sky. I repent, God, I should have listened, but I didn't. And I, but I, I, here I'm on my way. Amen. And now I have no pain. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's my healer. Yes. He's not only my savior, he's my healer. Yes. And there came a time I went to the book of Hebrews and I received him as my healer. I received him as my savior and I received him as my healer. He is my healer every day. He and I walk together. I work for him. I fly for him. I preach for him. He's my Lord, my savior, and he's my boss. And you're supposed to do what the boss says and I didn't. And, it, and what happened was just what he said would happen. <laughs> I crashed, but I found it under the curse. So I did what I should have done before and started praising just as loud and hard as I possibly could in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, don't you get under condemnation thinking, what did I do to get in this chair? You stop that in the name of Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. None in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Glory to God. Healed and well and strong. Hallelujah. In your spirit, your soul, and your body. Hallelujah, I said. Now we can, we can bring this to a close. I want to show you something in the 54th. Now that's the 53rd. He's on the cross. Now, you're in, now sing, O barren. Thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. 
Thou that didst not travail with trial, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch forth your curtains of thine inhabitation. Spare not, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your states. Now, if we look at verse 4, fear not. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of your youth and shall not remember the approach of your widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thine husband, and the Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Now look at it, verse 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. What was that for a small moment? Three days and three nights in hell itself. Now notice, now, preachers, pastors, you listen to me. Be very careful what you preach your congregation out of this first covenant. Notice this. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more be uh, go over the earth, so have I sworn I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke you, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be renewed, saith the Lord that has mercy on thee. Amen. Well, you just keep reading and you finally wind up over here. <clears throat> All thy children shall be taught of the Lord. Great shall be the shalom of your children. In righteousness <clears throat> shall you be established. You shall be far from oppression. Yes. Acts 10, 38. Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Yeehaw! I'm telling you, we're there. The healing power is in here now. The glory of God is all over this place. Thou shalt be far from oppression. You shall not fear, far from terror, for it shall not come near me. Behold, they, the oppression, the fear, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Oh. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, thou shalt fall for your sake. Behold, I created the smith that blows the coals in the fire, that brings forth an instrument for his work. I created the waster, it says, King Jim says, to destroy. I created the waster that destroys. So, I created him. I'm responsible for him. He's the destroyer. He's in the book of Malachi. Now, that's not tithing under the law. That's under the prophets. <laughs> Amen. Look, listen to me. And God said, I'm God, I change not. You've robbed me. You say, how did you rob me? You robbed me in tithes and offerings. But I forgive you. Bring all the tithe into my storehouse. Prove me in this, saith God. I'll open the windows of heaven to you and pour out blessing you don't have any room to contain. <clears throat> and he will not destroy. He will not destroy what's yours. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Here he is again. Yes, sir. Well, he didn't, he didn't call him by name very much. He did in the book of Isaiah. But they weren't born again. And if he'd, have, he'd have done a lot of teaching on him, they'd just followed him off out in the ditch. Now, the apostle Paul is the one that took the wraps off of him in the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. But it's also in the book of Isaiah. And it's also in the book of Daniel. So anyway, here we are. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue, listen to the tongue, the tongues, the tongues. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The destroyer is rebuked for our and his weapon of sickness and disease cannot prosper in this room today. It cannot. It cannot. I said it cannot. Now, Jesus said in that last Seder meal right there that changed heaven and earth, he said, the words that I, 14th chapter of John, the words that I speak unto you are not my own. It's the Father that dwells within me. He does the work. Well, the same Father is dwelling within you today, and he is still doing the work. Jesus is the healer, but it's the Spirit of the living God that carries out the work. Hallelujah. I want you to know, bless God, I'm so excited right now. It's running all over me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Now go with me to the book of Malachi. This little book. Now, I want you to notice something here. In the sixth, ver no, the fourth verse, Lord of hosts. Sixth verse, Lord of hosts. Eighth verse, Lord of hosts. Eleventh verse, Lord of hosts. Thirteenth verse, Lord of hosts. That's five times. 14th verse, six times, Lord of hosts. Chapter 2, seventh time, Lord of hosts. And then uh, the Lord of hosts. Ninth time in the seventh, Lord of hosts. Eighth verse, Lord of hosts. Tenth time, Lord of hosts. Twelfth verse, the eleventh time. Lord of hosts, 12 times. There it is in the third chapter, the Lord of hosts. Will a man rob God, yet you've robbed me? What you say, we're in, we're up in tithe. Uh, you're cursed with a curse. You've robbed me even in, in this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts the Lord of the angelic armies of God, the hosts, the angels are involved in this. Hallelujah. David said to Goliath, I come at you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. He invoked angels right then yes. and, and he took that sling, that one rock, hit the only place in his head and he fell to the ground. Then he took his sword and cut his head off. Well, which one did it, the rock or the sword? <laughs> I got curious about that, so I got to looking at different translations. And one of them said, the rock brought him down and the sword finished him off. <laughs> the angels, the, the Lord of hosts. Yes. The Lord of hosts is here today to heal your body. Hey, <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. The Lord of hosts, 22 times in that little four chapter book, 22 times the Lord of hosts is used. 
Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, I said. Glory, I said. Praise his name. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God forever. Praise God forevermore. Glory, 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 glory. I said glory, glory, glory. Now, Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Stand up, please. Gloria and I learned this, and others have learned this from Brother Hagin. Plug in with faith. Plug in with faith. John G. Lake, great man of faith, an apostle of faith. He was also a scientist. He said the power of God by the Holy Spirit in the body is to the body what electricity is. But you have to plug in to get the electricity and you have to plug in to God. We have power in these lights. But there's a way to turn that off. They have to be plugged in. <laughs> Your toaster. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't eat bread. I was addicted to it one time, so it doesn't exist in my life anymore. But Gloria does. And we have a little toaster sitting over there. And so, uh, you know, you put that, Raisin toast in there and brown it. It'll also burn it up. <laughs> and that same electricity that's cooking your toast kill you graveyard dead if it's misused. Unplug that toaster and it's worthless. Let me tell you something about money. Money is worthless until it's turned into goods and services. Now, this is just glory in me. This, this is the way the Lord's instructed us to do. We tithe, and then we take the next 10% and put it in a savings account. We don't touch that. No, I don't touch his tithe, and I don't touch that saving money. Amen. That's there. Hallelujah. Well, I couldn't, I just barely getting by on 90. What could I do on 80? Believe God. <laughs> because the windows of heaven are open if you tithe. Now, now go through the book of Deuteronomy and so forth. You'll find out tithing is done with your words. Go unto the priest that shall be in those days and Say unto him, put your tithe in a basket, take it before the high priest of those days and say before him. Then you go, go to the book of Hebrews and Jesus is our high priest. And there, here men that die receive tithes, there he receives them of whom it is witness he lives forever. Amen. But now that's between you and God. Absolutely between you and God. That's yours to decide. Hallelujah. Why ain't it get so quiet in here? <laughs> Where your smile is. Are you ready to plug in? Yes. We're going to do the prayer of faith right now. We're going to cover this thing. It said, Brother Hagin said, plug in with faith. Make an effort. When he was healed of heart and being totally paralyzed 
on the bed of affliction for 17 months. And the Lord started talking to him. Make an effort now. Plug in. Plug in with faith. Amen. So he said, and there early one morning, he weighed 89 pounds. And uh, just, he just, he said, I was just skin and bones. He said that morning, he, he said, the Lord said to me in my spirit, he said, he said, well, you believe you're healed now, right? Heart still beating wrong. From the waist down, he's totally paralyzed. His hands were partially paralyzed, could hardly see. He said, I sure do. He said, well, well, people ought to be up this time of day. <laughs> So he said, all right. And he just pushed his paralyzed legs out on the floor. He said, it's just like two clumps of wood. He said, I couldn't feel them. And he said, I slumped over and grabbed a hold of the, the, the bed post. And I was just hanging there. And he said, I want to announce. I want to announce to the Almighty God. I want to announce to his son, Jesus. I want to announce to all the angels in this room, the devil and everything in here. I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet in the name of Jesus. And he said, all of a sudden, feelings started coming into my legs and those nerves came alive. And he said, it began to hurt and I began to cry. He said, I'd cry and because it hurts so good, I could feel my feet. And he said, now, he had, a, he had a deformed heart, deformed lungs, deformed everything because he was born so premature. They thought he was dead when he was born. They induced labor to save his mother's life. Well, he said, in, in just a few moments' time, I was standing straight. My heart was beating right. And everything was, think about how the miracle that had to be done from his waist up. That just puts uh, to shame anything that, that's wrong with us. <laughs> but for 17 months, he kept in the word, Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25. Went to hell twice. And the Lord called him out. Hallelujah. Now I want to ask you this. If you believe this gospel that I have preached to you this morning, do you? Yes. And you're ready to receive the power of God unto salvation for your spirit, your mind, or body, Thank God you're standing up. Now, in the name of Jesus, if you can't stand up, stand up on the inside. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, whose I am and whom I serve, I take authority over all sickness, over all disease, and over all devils. I take authority over arthritis. I take authority over blindness. I take authority over lung disease. I take authority over the effects of COVID-19 or any other thing. I take authority over every stomach disease, liver disease, back disease, muscle disease. I take authority over every kind of sickness and disease of any kind because all of it has been born by Jesus on the cross. I take authority over it. Now you say this, the gospel that I have heard, the that I have heard is the power of God, God under my, my salvation. I confess, I confess Jesus, Christ Jesus Christ as Lord over my life. As Lord over my life. Spirit, Soul, soul and, body. and body. I receive the power of God, power of God to, make to make me sound, whole, whole delivered, delivered, saved, saved healed. healed. Now, now I act 
act on the Word of God. I receive the power of God. Sickness, disease, and pain. I resist you in the name of Jesus. Sickness, weakness, and pain. You're not the will of God. I enforce the Word of God on you. I will not tolerate you in my life. Leave my presence. I will never allow you back. My days of sickness and disease are over. The same. I am the same. I am the healed. I am the, the power of sickness has been forever broken over my life. The power of sickness has been forever broken over my life. Jesus bore my sickness. Jesus bore my sickness. He bore my weakness. He bore my weakness. And he bore my pain. And he bore my pain. I am forever free. Sickness shall no longer lord it over me. Sin shall no longer lord it over me. Fear shall no longer lord it over me. I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. I proclaim my freedom. Jesus' name. Today. 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 The gospel is the power of God to me unto salvation. I receive the gospel. I act on the gospel. I am made whole in Jesus' name. Now, act. Praise, move, see, hear, straighten up, be delivered, be free, be sound. Hallelujah. Do what you couldn't do before. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, glory, 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 glory. It is also written in the book of Matthew, beginning with the 14th verse. And Jesus came into Peter's house. So his wife's mother laid sick of a fever. He touched her hand. The fever left her. When evening was come, they brought many, many who were possessed with devils. Possessed with devils. He cast the spirits out with his word. He cast the out with word. And healed all that were sick. And healed all that were sick. Fulfilling. 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 That which was spoken, was spoken. By, Isaiah the by Isaiah the prophet. Saying. He took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. It's been fulfilled. Well, if it is fulfilled, then it's fulfilled now. Now, if, there, if there's any, any, anything in, in your back, this is what you do. Now I'm 85 years old, what's your excuse? <laughs> That's what I had to begin to do and exercise it and exercise it and work with it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, sharp 
pain right in this, this part of your shoulder. It's gone. If you just go ahead and lift your arm up there like that, you'll find that it's gone. Hallelujah. Put your hands on your head and say this. I call my body well. I'm like God. I call things and be not as though they were. I call my ears well. I call my eyes well. I call my sinuses well. I call my throat well. I call the insides of my mouth well. My gums are well. I speak to gum disease. Be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea. I'm redeemed from the curse of gum disease. Therefore, I no longer have gum disease. I refuse to have it. It doesn't belong to me. Jesus bore my gum disease on the cross, so it's not mine. I rebuke arthritis. It isn't mine. Jesus bore mine. So begin to move your fingers. Hallelujah. Begin to move your elbows and joints, particularly elbow joints that, that have been stiff and hurt, and you couldn't, maybe you couldn't do this. Whoa, yes. Just act like you got a barbell in each hand and just start pumping it. Oh, glory to God, I'm strong in my body. I'm strong in my back. I'm strong in my joints. Hallelujah. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his mouth and his might. Hallelujah. My feet are healed. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My liver's healed. My lungs are healed. My heart is healed. My stomach, is healed. my stomach is healed. All of my intestines are healed. All of my intestines are healed. The lower part of my body, my colon is healed. I will never have appendicitis. Those of you that have had the, your appendix removed, well, praise God and say, thank God that thing's gone. I don't need it anyway. <laughs> I'm healed. I'm healed. The Spirit of the living God is alive in me. And the Spirit of God said, if the Spirit that raised Jesus is alive from the dead, is alive in you, he will quicken or make alive your mortal body. Woo! Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, I'll tell you what saith the Lord. There are mountains in the spirit just the same as there are mountains on the earth. Climb the high mountain. Moses climbed Mount Nebo. He was 120 years old. His eye was not dim nor his strength abated. He climbed Mount Nebo and he from there could see the promised land. Climb Mount Nebo in your spirit. Rise up above the pain. Rise up above the sickness and look over into the valley of healing. Look over where the healing, look, look where the ocean of blood is and therein lies the healing of your body. And the, oh, glory to God. My mother finally got so tired. She had prayed night and day, a lot of it over me. And later she said, 
when she finally made 70 years old, she said, if I'd known I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. Amen. Well, it's never too late. It's never too late. And I was sitting up with her one night. And in my spirit, the Lord said, she doesn't need healing. And I said out loud, well, you could have fooled me. Look at her. He said, did you notice how quickly her, her skin healed from the bruises from those IVs? I said, yes, sir, but I, I, I apologize to you. Oh, Lord God, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I should have, but... And he said, did you notice how quickly that pneumonia cleared up when you laid hands on it? Forgive me, sir. I said, then what's the matter with her? He said, she's not sick. Her body is worn completely out. Don't you remember in my word where the 103rd Psalm says that I'll fill your mouth with good words so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? I said, yes, sir. I just flipped my Bible open there. And he said, you ought to start that now. And so I did. And I, I said, can I pray that over her? He said, all things are possible to him that believes. They thought she was going to die right there in that hospital. So I went, I just laid hands on her. And I said, Mama, your youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, she said, yeah, live two more years. Live two more years. And we moved down to Southwest. Started on Sunday morning, she just slipped out Sunday night before she was gone. Before it happened, it began to hurt me and I, I, I began grief coming out. I was like, no, you don't. Nope. Uh-uh. Not about to do that. I was driving down the freeway praying in the spirit for her. And all of a sudden, the anointing of God came on me and I saw it in the spirit and I just hollered, fly, little bird, fly. And I released her. <laughs> and got in her home going service and I got a beautiful picture of her and set it up on top of that box and sat there next to my dad. I said, dad, see her? He said, yeah. I said, that's, that, that's, uh, that's, that's who, you're, that's who you're going to see. She's going to look like that. He looked over there at me and smiled. He said, she is, isn't she? She is, isn't she? Hallelujah. He didn't grieve, neither did I. Oh, you did get tempted to. No, no. No, no. And the day... Grief is destroyed. Sickness is destroyed. Healing. I heard the Lord say it. He said, healing always comes. It's just not always received. There are people that preach the new birth. The new birth is always there. There are people who walk out and don't receive it. But you're healed today. Would you be seated, please? Now then... You remember the woman with the issue of blood? She kept saying, I touch his garment, I shall be whole. Faith came. So she crawled out there and touched his garment and thought she's going to just sneak back. But the Bible said Jesus stopped for he knew that power went out of him. And so what happened? She believed it. She received it. She acted on it. And then she told it. That's how we know 
she had that issue of blood 12 years. That's how we know she was uh, with many physicians, but whether we were, that's how we know she spent all of her living on that. So she told it. She just kept telling it and kept telling it. It's important to tell it. Now check yourself out. Check yourself out. If you want to stand up and bend over and walk around again, check yourself out now. We're going to have some testimonies this morning because you need to be telling it. Now, now I, I'm talking about now those of you that already know you have a manifestation of your healing. And, and, and if it's not there yet, we're standing with you. Glory to God. Amen. So, uh, how do we want to organize this? Joint? Both sides. Go ahead and go to both sides, and uh, we'll have folks greeting you over here, over here, and uh, then we'll begin the, the lines. And Kurt, while we're waiting for them to come, what kind of uh, testimonies are coming through? Yeah, abso absolutely, Pastor George. Over 17,000 people are watching right now, and in the chat, people are putting in here, Diane, I am healed. Christine says, by his stripes, I am healed. Judy says, my hands were in such pain, but Brother Copeland started praying, and the pain is completely gone. Praise God. Uh, Praise also, God. Chantel, th that, that is me totally healed from shoulder pain. When you started going like this, <laughs> I knew and she's was, from South yeah. Africa, is in the house watching right now. Also, we have Laura. I was dealing with gum aches, and today I have no more pain when you started praying. Also, they're coming in here so fast, I'm trying to read them as they're coming through. I was having shortness of, shortness of sight, but I am healed and I can completely see now. Um, my name is Darius. I'm healed of depression when you started praying today. Also you, coming Jesus. through here, uh, my retina, my retina memory is healed. It had problems with her, their memory, and they put on here that my memory is healed. She can recall things. Also coming in, I was dealing, I was dealing with hypromyalgia, and uh, maybe, where's Doc at? Where's Doc at? There he is. Why don't you read this one here, because I don't even know what it says. <laughs> fi uh, fi let's see. Uh, let's see. Hypo hypothyroidism? Yep, so I was dealing with hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, arthritis in my neck and high blood pressure and myasthenia gravis uh, and a, a couple of other things, and I'm healed. Amen. That's great. Yeah, praise God. And anybody with, with high blood pressure right now, you just say it. Blood pressure? Blood pressure. I speak to you now. I speak to you now. You are normal. You are normal. You're 120? Over 75 when I'm at rest. I'll never have high blood pressure again. Not ever, not ever, not ever. And right here, right at the base of the skull, somebody has had very, very severe pain. I speak to that pain right now. You go away. You stop it right now. You stop in your attack against my brother or sister right this minute. Go ahead, Kurt. Brother Copeland, you called out lungs, and Billy Smith wrote in here, thank you, God, for my healing of my lungs today. Robin Lind put on in the chat, my right shoulder had, had pain, and I just completely healed, and I have no more pain whatsoever. Thank you, Lord. Now, I know of, I, I know of one man that's here with this, but, and I've already talked to him, but I'm going to call this out. Anybody that's been diagnosed with the need of a pacemaker, and you have any fear about it. I bind that fear in the name of Jesus. I've been through it. There's nothing to it. But now you make sure, you make absolutely sure, you make absolutely sure, you pray, you choose the doctor, and then go get it done. Don't mess with that. Now, if God tells you, don't do that, I'm going to heal it, that's a whole different thing. Amen? Very sweet woman. I mean, she worked in our house for 40 years. I mean, she bossed that household. I mean, we always did what Miss Tommy told us to do. Well, she had AFib pretty bad, and, and I laid hands on her. And, and the severity of it lit up. Her doctor told her, 
I want you to have a pacemaker. She said, and she told me, she said, I, I don't know, I'm kind of afraid of that. I said, no, Tommy, you don't have any need to be afraid of that. Well, she kept putting it off and, and then her doctor said, well, uh, the, I want the very best man to do it, so we'll wait until next week. That weekend, she had a stroke and she was gone. Well, I had the privilege of conducting her homegoing service and she's on up in age there. But she could have still been here. Don't be afraid of that. And if that's the case, if you is anything in your, in your heart at all, just put your hand on it there and say it. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. whose I am and whom I serve. serve. Heart, I speak to you. Jesus made you (laughs) and I received my healing. All right, now I'm going to tell you something about Brother Hagin. He said, when you get the news that I've gone home, you know I was satisfied. Nancy, he said that all the time. He had preached in Toronto. I have, I, I have the message in my phone he was in Toronto and he was making, he was making plans of what they were going to do the next year. This is 2003. What they were going to do the next year. They came home and uh, Jerry Horton came over and fixed breakfast. He ate a big breakfast that morning, extra bowl of strawberries (laughs) and cream. Looked over there at Aretha and smiled and He's gone. Well, Ken Jr. called me immediately and told me what happened. And, uh, and, th- and then he called me back. Well, of course, I went to pray it. He called me back. Now, listen to what he said. He said, Kenneth, his heart won't quit beating. He said, he has no brain activity. That heart was so deformed. He said it, it, he said it beat like an old old T model Ford, just jump all (laughs) over the place. I said, Ken, you know what you're going to have to do. I said, you're going to have to get the half family and go back down there. And that's a faith heart. And you're going to have to speak to it and turn it off. He said, I knew that. I just didn't want to. Now remember now, they went back down there and laid hands on him and spoke to his heart in the name of Jesus according to Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25. And it stopped. Ah! Now don't tell me this doesn't work. They spoke to that heart. Talk to yours. Talk to yours. Talk to your back. Talk to your eyes. It was in in, uh, Southwest a couple of years ago, and I I walked over there among among wheelchairs, and this woman was there, and she had dark glasses on. I found out later it was her her granddaughter that was behind her there. And I said, may I do what Jesus did? She said, by all means. So I went (laughs) and put my hands in her eyes and held it there until the Lord said, let go. And first I took her glasses off and handed it to her granddaughter. And I took it off. I said, what do you see? She said, I see you. <laughs> and she just began to praise. Well, then she came to Southwest the next morning and we heard the, 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 the uh, testimony. She testified at Southwest Sunday morning. She said, I had double vision so bad that I was legally blind. But she said, when he took his hands off my eyes, I could see clearly. And she said, I could see his face just as clear. And, and uh, she passed her to church. George said, how old are you? She said, I'm 75 and I'm still alive. And she said, I'm next year, I'll be 78 going straight. <laughs> and she said, I'm going to keep on pastoring now. There you go. 
Now I'm talking to eyes. Talk to your eyes. Begin to see through them. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead. Brother Copeland, this is Chris Bilker from Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, he, three years ago, he had a stroke and uh, he was healed of that, but then he uh, recently broke his femur and he was having some stomach pain. But uh, when you prayed the prayer, he felt the warmth go through his body and he's considerably better right now. Praise God. Tell, tell me, tell me something about that. Uh, yes, I, it's, uh, I went through my body. I was at your house when your mom was uh, preaching and you were going to, uh, to take John on a plane, you, one of your, your planes in 72. And um, I just can't get over the multitudes of people from the 300 people over at uh, uh, the, the other convention center compared to what's happening now right. in your ministry. Well, and you're healed today. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Give the Lord a praise for that. That's good news. Well, Brother Copeland, this is Beatrice Nakundi. She's from just down the road in Trophy Club. She got up this morning and her throat just began to bother her and then you called out, put your hands on your throat. <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> Woo, tell me about it, girl. I was feeling a slight dis uh, discomfort this morning, and I felt, oh, it's, it's nothing. It's just drink some water, but I claim my healing. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Copeland, uh, someone put on the chat here, I received healing from grief. My grandma and my papa passed in March and in May of this year. I received healing in my left shoulder, lower back, and arthritis symptoms are feeling, uh, they're going away. Also in here, Diana said, less pain in her left knee. Also on in the comments, let me see here. Uh, this was me. I've had pain in my lower back for, since I've been a teenager. Today, I have no pain when you started Glory praying. Glory God. Cold. Hallelujah. I've had arthritis pain in my feet and hands, and the second time you called out arthritis, my pain left instantly. There's literally 17,000 people right now, Brother Copeland, around the world watching and oh. are being healed and touched Glory right now. God. And these are folks, these are just people that are coming through in live time, real time, on Facebook in our chat. My hip is healed. My legs are the same length. Her hips are off and it's totally, totally healed. Also, praise the Lord, arthritis pain is gone from my right hand and my foot. Uh, let's see here. I'm about to shout. Um, I'm healed from high cholesterol, high blood pressure, pre-diabetes. I am whole and I am healed. Uh, Barbara put in here, healed from two heart problems two years ago. God is faithful to his promises. And then Mary just put in here, my eyesight is getting better. I can even read the logo at the bottom of the screen on the Victory <laughs> Channel. Hi, Nettie. This is Gloria Faith, named her after Miss Gloria. <laughs> tell me about that before you tell me about your healing. Yes, um, my parents uh, got married at a very young age and my mom always loved Gloria and they were trying to figure out a name to give me. I was born in 1999 and um, they were watching Gloria Copeland one day and the Lord just told her, Gloria. And then because this is a ministry of word of faith, they said, name her Gloria Faith. Oh. And so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so your name is Gloria Faith. Yes. Well, how do you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, she um, has, her knee was hurting her from a, wor a working out injury, but she started, once she started confessing, the healing came today. Glory to God. Look at yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Got to be all right. Your name is Glory of Faith. <laughs> Brother Coblin, this is uh, John Murray. He's from right here in Arlington, Texas. Two things to celebrate today. He said he threw his arm out in Little League as a kid and his shoulder wouldn't work right. And when you said, raise your arm, he said, I just threw my arm up and no pain. I can use it now. 
<laughs> Second thing was he had torn his meniscus in his right knee and had really bad <coughs> arthritis. It's all gone. Praise God. Show me what you show me what you can do. That's oh, look at that shoulder. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give the Lord a praise for that. Amen. 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 Hey, I got, Kelly. I got some super kids. Oh, hey, super kids. You know, we prefer not to call it school, so we have healing party. We like that over there better. We have a healing party. So we've been partying this morning, and this is Amaria, and I want her to tell you what happened to her. Um, for the last couple days, I've been feeling really sick, and I've been coughing a lot, and um, today I got prayed for, and I haven't been coughing, and I've been healed. Isn't that good? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. This is Rachel. Uh, Here. Let's, okay, yeah. I had a ritual today. You talk a little louder. I had a ritual, and then they prayed for me today, and all my fear went away. Let me, let me help her say what she told us. She said she was hearing voices, is that right, telling her things to do. And when they let, prayed for her, she got free from that. Oh, and praise God. Isn't that good? Thank you, sir. Mm, mm, mm. This is Jonathan. So, like, the past couple of days, um, I've been, like, feeling weak and, like, tired. And, like, every time I get, uh, my mom told me to get up to come here, I was, like, super tired and I didn't want to get up. But then after they, uh, yeah, I, w I was shy, and then after they uh, prayed for me, I felt, like, energetic, and I wanted to play the games and everything. Glory to God. You want him to come lay hands on you? Uh huh <laughs> We need him to lay hands on us. We appreciate that. Thanks, Jonathan. This is T Terry, right? Come up here, Terry. Tell us what happened. Okay, so I got my arm shut into a car door. And once I got prayed for, I felt a lot better. I felt more joyful. Uh, I felt a lo lot more blessed because of the God we have. And I felt like I could do a lot more. Let me, show us your arm. Glory to God. Pain's gone. He said he had pain just even when it wasn't bending. Thank you, Jonathan. Terry, I'm sorry. Thank you, Terry. You know what, though? Did you, have you noticed, I think almost as I was talking to him, I think almost every one of them said, I felt joyful. It's like the inside thing. We've been talking a lot about just sitting with the Lord on the inside of you. And I just want to put that out there. Some of you have got things bothering you right now on the inside, and it's coming between you and the healer. So just say, say, Lord, I just give you all that trauma, and I take joy. Because that's what's happening here. They're experiencing the joy, and then the thing breaks loose. Come here, Kate. You know this one, don't you? Yes, I do. This is my granddaughter, Kate. What happened, Kate? So when I was um, getting prayed for after like a second later, I was like happy again. But before that, I was sad and I didn't even know why. And then the next, the second when they finished praying for me, I was happy and smiling and laughing. Praise God. Hey, tell me what was, what was bothering you before? Why did you come up there? What had been going on? I had a demon messing with me when I was like three and four and five. And then once my parents prayed with me at my time and then that awful dream I was having the next morning was but gone. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. To the Lord cares. Thank you, sweetie. And this is Sophia. Well, I was getting prayed for, and a few minutes later, I was sneezing, and I listened to my sister getting prayed over, and when that was finished, I stopped sneezing. She said she felt better after her sister got prayed for. <laughs> 
So you, are, how many of y'all are feeling better already? Yeah. Amen. Listen to our kids get healed. Uh, it's Caden. Hi. Um, um, I um, have always felt like there was something more for me. I, I'm feeling fine. Nothing was wrong for me. I just thought, like, what now? And I told God to give me a sign before um, one of my counselors prayed for me. And um, the second she prayed for me, I opened my eyes, and everything was brighter. Skin colors, shadows, every single thing I saw. Oh my Praise God. What an experience. You know, I think we forget that God wants us to experience him. So today, just receive. Amen. Hey, buddy. This is Cash. Um, my mom and dad, um, I had ant bites on my foot, and my mom, my mom prayed for them, and they got healed. Ant bites. They got healed. Glory Those ant bites are gone. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing our children. Thank you, Lord. Hi, Brother Copeland. This is Joyce, and she's from, or Tracy, and she's from Baltimore, and when she showed up here, she had been unable to take notes for about two years because of her shoulder. Yeah, so I was having pains in my shoulder and I was like trying to take notes but I couldn't so I tried different ways to hold the pen. I was stretching the whole time and it just wasn't working. So when you prayed about the shoulder being healed, um, I started feeling like a little bit of pins and needles. Also my hip was hurting so I just started feeling pins and needles there and so was my ankle so I was able to move that and able to do all this <laughs> without pain and everything I can stretch and all that so I just bless the name of the Lord for that. Ooh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. This is Cindy from Springfield, Missouri, and she Hi, had a, uh, a tendon that had slipped off of her shoulder joint and was causing pain all the way through her body. And I, I, I was sitting behind her when you called out shoulders and do something, and, and I saw her lift her hands and say, that's me. And so I grabbed her really quick and said, will you testify? So she's, she said, it's, it's good. Let me see what you can do. <laughs> I have something else to share as well. I took the hair thing that you talked about last night, and while you were praying and said, put your hands on the top of your head, the whole top of my head started tingling. So I know my hair is going to be back God. 30, 60, and 100 fold. Amen. I, re I, I agree with you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother Copeland, this is Sylvia Murray from San Marcos, Texas, and she was scheduled for uh, TMJ surgery on August the 24th, but today during healing school, she... I don't have any more pain, and I was able to open my mouth wide, and I knew it was done with, and I'm going to cancel the surgery because I don't <laughs> need it anymore. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Copeland, this is Sister Blessing from Kansas. Well, she's been dealing with her right leg, pain in her right leg, but she told her husband, if, she, if you can drive me to the convention and get me to healing school, I will be healed. Brother Copeland, she is healed this morning. Let me see. Let, tell me about it. What, what was going on with it? Yeah, I have this problem. It's a menstrual pain which affects my right legs, and it's gone on for years. And last, I, it went, before coming, it was going to stop me from coming, but I forced through. I got it on Thursday. I said, this morning will be my time. Right. And then when we were praying, everything just gone. Uh, praise God. Praise the Lord. So there's no pain there at all, huh? Sorry, no more pain. No pain. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Brother Copeland, this is Mel and Marilyn Anderson. They are from Grand Junction, Colorado. They have been here all week. We met in the hotel. Grand earlier. Junction. I love um, that. Mel has had, had a series of five back surgeries in the last five years. Two years ago, he had a fall that broke his hip and his leg. He's been in here. This morning, when he came in, his left rib was resting on his left hip and just causing excruciating pain. When you said stand up, he stood up. He stood up longer than he's been able to stand up in the last wow. five years. And he says that has moved up now about an inch and a half. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Mm -hmm. These limbs and legs and muscles strong in the Lord. 
yeah. healed and well and strong Amen. all over my brother's body. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the power of God flooding through your being right now, affecting a healing and, and deliverance from every pain and in every way. Glory to God. You, Are you his wife? Yes. yes, I am. Oh, you look good too. <laughs> Can you pay for one particular thing for me? Yes. Uh, new optic nerve in my left eye. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. So close your eyes. One of the anointings of Jesus. He's, he said, the Lord has anointed me to preach the, uh, sight to the blind, sight to these eyes, optic nerve be restored now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose I am and whom I serve. Devil, take your hand off of his eyes right now in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, let's praise God right now. Praise the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Now look at me. Yes. Just go on and just look at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You think I look good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah all right. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, praise God. Can I stand up? Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Stood up in years. Say it again. He's the tallest I have stood up in years. Oh, this is my original height, six foot eight. Well, praise Glory be to God forevermore. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You bet. Every step a step of faith. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you do, talk to that chair. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and be seated. But talk to that chair. Talk to it and tell it. Just say, chair, I don't need you. That's right. Here I, 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 don't, I don't need you. You're, you, you're just, you're my helpmate right, right now. Right. But I don't need you. I'm healed and the power of God's going through my body. I'm healed. Right. I don't need this chair. Right. Go way to God. Anymore. All I need is Jesus and his word. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Come on, somebody. Woo. Hallelujah. Sir, it's an yes. honor to have met you. Honor to have met you, too. I thank God for you. Thank you. And next year you come back to Southwest and you come up there on that platform and give your testimony. I'm going to walk you next year. Yes, you are. Yes. With eyesight in that eye. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. You yeah. bet. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Now I agree. Glory to God. Brother Copeland, this is Tim Morgan from Olympia, Washington. Hey, and uh, he had significant shoulder pain. But Thursday, he ran into Tim Fox. And uh, Tim Fox laid his hands on him and prayed for him. And the pain completely left him. So he wanted to come up Praise and testify. Praise God. That. <laughs> That's good. And afterwards, the word of the Lord came to me, reminding me that we will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Thank you. Praise God. Tim, I'm glad to see you well this morning. Amen. Brother Copeland, Kathy put in the chat, I am free from grief due to a difficult divorce. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, another person put in the chat, I'm healed in my lower back. Praise God. You called out high blood pressure and sinus problems. I had sinus pressure, and it instantly left when you called it out. I have been healed in my eyes. No more glaucoma. I can see clear vision. 
I am healed. No more tingling in my ankles due to swelling. I woke up this morning sneezing repeatedly and experiencing runny nose and watery eyes. And as soon as Brother Copeland prayed for our eyes and nose, I got instant relief. Praise God. I can keep going here. Hallelujah. My neck just cracked from having a stiff neck. I am healed. I was having pain in the base of my neck. It's completely gone. I am healed. I had lower back pain. And after you prayed, Brother Copeland, praise God, no more back pain. God is so great from Florida. <laughs> my left foot aches, was aching so bad I'd fallen and it completely was healed today. There's no more pain whatsoever in my foot. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody better shout in here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Nettie. This is Stephanie, and since April, she's been having pain all over her body. Um, but God's been healing her. Uh, but to, th there was a lingering pain in her right arm. And today, that pain is gone. Oh, praise God. Tell me about it. Well, in April, um, I started having unexplained all over body pain. I would wake up with pain, go to sleep with pain. Nothing was relieving it. And my mother and my brother, we just all started praying. And I started meditating in the Word of God. And... I woke up and all of the pain disappeared, but the right arm was still lingering with pain. And today you prayed and I just lifted that arm up and praise God, I have no pain. Praise God, let me, let, let me see what you can do. <laughs> Brother Copeland, this is Joe Bradley. She's from Phoenix, but she's moving here next week to go to Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Look at you. <laughs> She Welcome. suffered from scoliosis and had to have both hips replaced because one leg was shorter than the other. But when you prayed, she said she started feeling movement in her spine. Mm. And even as we were standing there waiting, she said, I still feel it. Things are leveling up. Yeah, yeah like, a, like, like I'd been to the chiropractor. <laughs> you know, it was it starting to feel more even because it's... So. And you're a student at KCB. Yes, I'm going to start this. Well, bless your heart. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for, for joining up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Brother Copeland, this is Effie, and she's right, she lives right here in Texas. And uh, she's been having issues with her throat um, ever since last November. It would, and she'd go to the doctor, it would like clog up and just be painful. And then they would give her medication and it would be better. And then it would come back and it would be better and it'd come back. But she asked if, she said, I would like for Brother Copeland to pray for me. But as we were standing over there, she started saying, well, it's clearing up just standing here. <laughs> it's clearing up just standing here. So just making the effort to come up. And something else that I would like to share that she shared with me. Um, her son was in the Pentagon on 9-11, and uh, he went to heaven in the Pentagon, and she's, the Lord has helped her through that and helped her get Bless you, past Lord. all of that. So, Praise but her, her voice so and her throat is clearing up. Praise God. Amen. Branson, I came up to Branson and spent a whole week with you and Gloria. You probably forgotten me. Praise <laughs> God. Thank you. Thank now you. that um, being released from grief like that. That's a major thing in the healing of the pain in your body because they, you know, they, they get tied together. And, and when that release comes, um, Gloria's little brother, Stanley, was asleep in the front seat of a truck and uh, that over there in Arkansas, there's a steep curve, but instead of leaning like this, it, it's, it has an adverse lean to it. And the young man was driving too fast and it just left over there and, there and that truck burned. Well, you can imagine how that hit the whole family. Well, we, joined, we, we got together and went through the things of the, of, of the Word and so forth. The whole family, we gathered together at our house and dealt with it. Then Gloria went to a women's conference and there was a woman there talking about the time she spent in heaven. 
And she saw all of these wonderful, marvelous things. And I, I, I won't take time to go over. Well, one of them, they, she said they went to church, went to this gorgeous place, and, and Jesus walked out on the platform, and the ceiling was made up of angels, and they just all took off when he walked out there. Well, she said the biggest thing going right now is pre in preparation to the catching away of the church. And so she came to Gloria afterwards. She said, Gloria, uh, I've never met you, but I have a message for you. Now, her little brother was a brick and rock mason, and he was strong. You couldn't get him to keep sleeves in his shirt. You buy him a new shirt, he cut sleeves out of it and put his jacket on because his muscles are so big and they'd bind him. And uh, we went somewhere and I took him down and I bought him a jacket and bought him a new shirt. He went right home and cut the sleeves out of that shirt. She said, we were there in the, the big hall. She said, I can't tell you how big that hall is. And they was making place match for the, for the marriage supper of the Lamb. She said, that's the next big thing in heaven. But she said, Gloria, this young man walked over there to me and he said, would you tell Gloria I wasn't in that truck when it burned? And he said, she said, the funny thing about him, he was the only one there that didn't have any sleeves in his garment. <laughs> that ended it right there. So you see, he wasn't there when it burned. He wasn't there Amen. when it burned. Amen. He's already gone. Bill? Effie, I know you. <laughs> we were at a special 9-11 service at the Pentagon. I've been wondering where you were. Well, I got my phone number right in here, bless the Lord. But you know, uh, when Brother Hagin told me that we were going to have start to have a lot of people at the last go over on the other side and come back and give testimony, well, one of my latest, dearest friends is Dean Braxton, Brother Dean Braxton. And um, he said that believers in every case, their, their body does not die, and so their spirit can leave. In every case, the spirit leaves, and then the body can yeah, die. Yeah, every time. And I thought of Gloria's brother. The Lord knows. I mean, something like the Pentagon thing, yeah. Effie. And he called his, and then his spirit, could, yes. then his body could die. Yes. So he, he never felt that Remember pain. When, oh, I'm glad. Yeah, we made contact again. Yes. When, when Bob DeWeese had that, that massive heart attack on the handball court. And uh, <laughs> he was, he and Charlotte were telling me about it. And he told me, he said, all of a sudden, I, I was in this place with a gorgeous, beautiful uh, road, and I looked over, and there was a fence on both sides, and he said, it looked like to me hand-carved mahogany. Now, he wasn't aware he didn't have a body. Mm -mm. He said, I never felt so good. Yeah. Boy, he said, my, my legs were strong. And he said, then I, he said, I saw the lights, and I realized I was in heaven, and that's the home city. And he said, I started running. Then he said, I started bogging down. I couldn't. And then he said, uh, suddenly I heard the, uh, the, uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden I was back in the hospital. Well, he was telling glory to me that and Charlotte was standing there. There was the city of faith. And <laughs> Charlotte said, you want me to tell you what he said? He didn't say, Charlotte, thank you for saving my life. Thank you, doctor. She said the minute he woke up, he said, Charlotte, what did you do that for? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do that for? Dr. Jackson. Hey, Brother Copeland, I wanted to say that, so the Lord wanted me to tell you this. When you look in a person's eyes, that's the only time that you can see their brain without doing surgery. And when you look in it, what you see is the optic nerve. And in the optic nerve, you can see that it's bright. Why? Because your spirit produces electricity 
that powers your, your body. But when people leave, that light goes out. So that's one of the interesting points that he wanted me to, to share is that's an indicator when people leave their body. So, for instance, for, for Dad Hagen, he had a generated a new heart, and we know that the heart tissue, once, once that's working, you can take the heart clear out of the body. It'll still beat, right? Yeah. But he left. His spirit left his body, and I bet you if you would have looked in his eyes, you would not have seen... Well, no that electricity exactly. no it wasn't there and that's that's and that's what there. ken jr told me yeah yeah it's obvious he's gone yeah. right. well actually i was on sunday morning brother hagan always said the best way to go was have a good breakfast and then after you've had a good breakfast you leave and he had, he had called jerry and told her to come over and fix him a good breakfast so she did. She made him everything. She, she told me this. She made him everything he liked, but she left off the gravy because the doctor said gravy wasn't good. Now she wished she made it. But <laughs> then after they finished at the table, he went over and sat on the couch with Aretha and ate his extra strawberries. And then he just smiled at them and he left. Well, Aretha called the EMT and they got the body back to going. But his spirit was already, He's already left. gone. That was on Sunday, and they didn't get his heart to stop until Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get tired of this? No. no. Never, ever. What happened to you? Brother Copeland, this is Joyce, and she's come hey, here Joyce. from Los Angeles. And when she got here... She was totally fine, but then that changed. I, I uh, have been watching you and Sister Gloria on Healing School. I watch it every Saturday, and I thank God. I've been watching for years. So I know not to tolerate sickness, pain, disease, anything. I read my healing scriptures, and when I came here, I was perfectly healed, and it rose up in me. Oh, so on Tuesday, I had uh, pain that started on the left side, of my leg, went around my back, around the buttocks area, and then traveled down the right side. And I had trouble getting out of bed, walking up and down the stairs. But yesterday it rose up in me. I came here healed. I'm going home healed. Yes. And I am healed in Jesus' name. Praise no God. I can bend down, touch my knees. Let me see you do it. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Praise God. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Rick? Brother Copeland, this is Virginia from San Antonio, Texas. Eight and a half years ago, she was in a very bad car accident. Her body was out of adjustment. She has scars on her bodies. During the week, she started feeling like, uh, things begin to be adjusted. This morning, she said she got an overhaul on her body. She's fully adjusted, fully healed this morning. Glory to God. My, my lungs feel like clean and re renewed, like I can breathe deeper than I felt like I could before. So I know that some marvelous things happen in my body to, today. <laughs> so I'm so very thankful. I Thank love you. It. And I just wanted to add that I was able to stay here all week. I had planned on being here for two days. And I know my heart's desire was to be here all week. And I'm very thankful for the, for, there was a couple of people that paid for the extra nights yeah. for our hotel. And I, I, I was just overwhelmed with such love that I've seen at the convention. I was like, wow, this is supernatural. Supernatural have happened. Things have happened to me this week while I've been here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is Charlene Hubler from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. She became a partner yesterday, and she's been healed of shooting pains in her shoulder and crunching pains in her neck. Praise it's God, Charlene. Years of pain, and I make wreaths um, to make extra money, and it was to the point where I, I thought I was going to have to stop. It was so bad. You know, so, and one thing I'd like to say, I asked Jesus if I could come to this. 
I turned 75 on August the 1st. So that was Monday, I said, and Jesus gave me all the money I needed for my plane fare, my hotel, all my food, and my dog sitters at home. And I was invited by my pastors who are KCBC graduates from your first class. Right. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, isn't this wonderful? Brother Copeland, this is Joyce from New Rochelle, New York. And she came here expecting to receive a manifestation for arthritis that she'd been having, some issues in her arm. Well, during the prayer this morning, uh, she received her manifestation. Thank God. Praise the Lord. You know, I know God is a healer, and I've been standing on his word. But I knew if I could get here to the healing school, I would be healed. Yesterday, I couldn't turn this hand um, anyway, but the day look, look at, at you. Look at, <laughs> look at it. I'm healed, and I thank God for it. Thank God. God. Now, what happens? <clears throat> I've had this happen to me time and time and time and time and time again. I'm standing on the Word of God, but I get where there is cooperate faith, yes. and 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 spiritual synergy takes yes. place. Now, I saw Bob Nichols here last night, and. We came in from the road, and I found out that, that Brother Hagin's going to be at Bob Nichols' church. Well, I had sprained my ankle, I'm telling you, until I just could hardly walk. And I said, but Gloria, I'll tell you what, Brother Hagin's over there, we're going. Well, two things happened. We walked in the front door, we were a little bit late, and there's a woman came storming out the front door. She said, I am absolutely so mad. And she didn't wait till I asked her why. She said, I've been healed for over 2,000 years and I just found out about it tonight. <laughs> well, that did me good. Well, I went on in there and sat down and I had a hard place putting that ankle anywhere and it had swelled up, you know. But Brother Hagin went to Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25 and I got in there with him and, went, and I told Bob last night, I said, I, I got up to walk out and I thought, well, look at, I said, Glory, look here. That ankle was totally healed and the swelling had all gone down under the Word and all these other believers there and all of us believing God together. That's why it's so important to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. That's what it's all about. I'm so glad you're healed this morning. Amen. Brother Copeland, this is Cynthia Marie. She's Hi, actually Cynthia. from... Uh, Victoria, Texas. And yesterday she was working in the bookstore and she had a problem with her heart and the ambulance came to get her, but the people prayed for her here. And so she came back to tell you about it. What happened, Cynthia? Yeah. Hi. Well, I have been diagnosed with that heart thing you're talking about. And uh, for no apparent reason, my heart will just click in a moment and start racing and race just as fast as it can. Well, it usually calms down in about 20, 20 minutes. It'll click off and go back to normal. Well, yesterday I was at the bookstore working and it clicked on right away. My friend was with me who I was working with and I told her, you better pray for me right now because my heart just kicked into high gear and it's wanting to run. So we prayed and then um, it, wasn't, it wasn't coming down. So about two hours we waited. It was probably too long to wait, but um, after two hours, the ambulance came because they suggested I go to the hospital. Well, they injected me with that stuff they stopped my heart and got it beating again. So now it's normal. It's beating regular, and I feel fine. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. I just want to say that people don't realize it. The people that are here really do care, and they love you very much. And God loves you, and Jesus is Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take one more on this side and one more on this side. Okay, this is Connie. She was coming from visiting her sister in the hospital because her sister was getting surgery on Thursday. And she saw the signs in the front that the Believers, West Coast Believers, I mean, Southwest Believers Convention is here. It's on. And so she came, and during Brother Sav uh, Savelle's offering, she sowed a seed, and she named her seed for her sisters to, uh, to be completely healed, to be able to breathe on her own 100%. And she's here to testify that she is breathing 100%. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was sitting up there, and my sister's name is Gloria, too. 
I never come down. I never come down. Holy Spirit said, go tell him. She's named Gloria, too. Her name is Glory Renee Milton. She's been in the hospital since May 31st. My sister's been on it. She hit her, she hit her head. She's 50, 54. I'm 52. She hit her head. Brain was bleeding. They said she would never be the same. Doctors kept saying the bleeding. Her brain would never be the same. We kept praying, kept calling the prayer line. Every time they would come say something, we kept praying. I said, they say it's this. They said, okay, we'll pray for that. They say it's this. We'll pray for that. <sighs> I left the hospital. Me and my girlfriend's there Thursday early in the morning, 6.45, to go pray with my sister. I work from home. I come from downtown Harris, come this way. And I said, where are these people going? I always come to the conference. But taking care of my sister, I forgot about the conference. And I come, I see the people walking in, and I see the signs that say, I said, the conference is here. I said, I'm coming back tonight when I get off of work. And so my son, Jeremiah, always come. I said, Jeremiah, the conference is here. We got to go tonight. So Pastor Savelle was preaching. And I'm just going to tell y'all, before I came that night at 7 o'clock, I have a basket I keep in my room. Been saving $2 bills. Just $2 bills, nothing else. These $2 bills, y'all. And God said, do not go before me empty hand. Take the $2. I took all the $2, sold it up there. and then I was sitting up there. And I sold it. And I sold it for my sister, Gloria. They took my sister off the vent at 3.30. They said she wouldn't breathe. My sister's breathing at 100%. And this is Donnie Lamb, evangelist from Holdenville, Oklahoma. He has, we've had a lot of stories about people getting provision for their hotel room. He didn't think he was going to be able to come. Got an email. So they said, you have points. You have nights. So he got to come. So he's been here. He's had lower back pain for years. He's had four radial ablations that did not work. They put him on a pain patch a year ago. You called out, touch your toes. He had a discernible pop. <laughs> well, when you told her, said to bend over and touch your toes, I've always had pain about midway of my back down about my tailbone area. And you said to bend over, and when, when I bent over, my back popped all the way down, and now I have no pain. Glory to God, Megan. <laughs> Let me see what you can do. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Hallelujah. On your feet, everybody. Glory. 